Citizens, welcome again to the Fish Eye Canteen. Today, we're going to be hunting for monsters. But before we get started, we have some of the best specialists here to give us more information about the special infected, how to hunt them down, and a few very interesting stories about their ascent. Okay, so we got Demolisher, we got Banshee. La, la. Who's that? And, ah, uh, Banshee. Uh-huh, gross. Uh-huh. Look, how do you feel about these creations that you created, right? Roaming around the Villador remains. It's gonna sound weird, but they are like children to us that we can face finally in the game. Because the last few years that we spent on the game was not only the modeling or concepting the best infected, but it was very important for us and we lived and breathed this world nice. as we pride and satisfaction of what we achieved. I see, okay. So that's why there's so many of you here today. Not just one person could tell us all of this information. Honestly, no, because we want you to know how complex is the process of creating characters for a game. And honestly, we are stronger as a team. If you want to know more about the infected, you need to get uh, through us first. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm a bartender. I can smell a good story a mile away. So you have more details for me? Yes, we have. What's the first steps in the process, Dominic, that we take in order for the concept to so, be developed. Yeah. So the first step for us is to receive the proper brief. It means that uh, design and gameplay team approaches us with a document or they say, basically, we want in a game big, tough and slow guy like Demolisher. Uh -huh. this, yes, one. this one, yes. And we also want him to have a lot of armor to feel like he's a panzer. And that's the moment where Kasha and her concept art team can jump in and start working on the concept art. Yeah, but before we start working on concept art, we need to start gather some inspirations. And uh, we sometimes meet as a whole team, also with Carolina, with Dominique, and the rest of 3D artists, uh, on these brainstorm sessions where we meet together and we can share ideas, uh, inspiration. Uh, and after that, we can start gathering uh, references, like images from the internet. Like what? <laughs> you know, okay. Like looking at this, you, <laughs> might, you might imagine, yes. Mm. Dark stuff. How dark? <laughs> <laughs> like you cannot find them on Google. Mm. You need to use different search machines. Oh. Yeah, when I was working on Revenant, I was looking at the gangrene references. Did it gross you out or did you become fascinated, actually? You know, it was a moment that I, won't, I wouldn't eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> To be real, we just focused on finding um, photos and images of uh, different uh, skin conditions, skin mm -hmm. diseases, and uh, it's really amazing how the skin, maybe those not photos, but those are paintings, uh, but how the skin can look like, for example, wood uh, or stone or bubbles, uh, for example, after a really bad burn. And we also need to think how it affects the muscles, mm -hmm. the movement, the silhouette, and uh, etc. Looking at these designs and this art, I have to ask, GRE Anomaly, The Revenant. How did you come up with such a, a monstrosity? Revenant was designed by our concept artist, Rafael. Uh -huh. Of course, everything started with the brief. They said that The Revenant had to be the most intelligent and almost human-like, very scary and a bit creepy. And Rafael did a very good job. He conceptualized his uh, scrawny uh, figure silhouette with unnaturally long limbs. I, me as a modeler, only added some tasty details from myself. Like what? For example, I've added this uh, torn and stretched skin on mm. his wings uh, to show that the mutation progressed very quickly and his body didn't adjust to it naturally. Also, I've sculpted uh, some bulges and skin folds on the areas uh, where the clothing stuck. I wanted to show how painful it, uh, it might be for him, like to show this uh, rapid mutation mm -hmm. and growth that cause the skin to be pulled by the wings and it, yeah, I think it would be painful and I wanted to, everything I did on this, on his sculpture and textures was to show the most important, his suffering. And I have to say, this one, this guy is my favorite one. This is your favorite one? Yes, the design and the, how the model turned out, it's really great in the game. Can you tell us how to defeat this terrible monster? Yes, his weak point. It's on his back, mm -hmm. the blisters. That's why I've added the missive texture 
to help players to locate them during mm -hmm. the night because you fight with the GR anomaly at night. And also, uh, the Revenant has this wobbly um, derpy animation showing that he's struggling to keep his balance because of this enormous and heavy mutation on his back. And then, then he is very slow and the player can easily approach him and attack freely. So you all worked on the Demolisher together, right? So yes. can you tell me, me more Tommy. about the mutual work? So I was did. responsible for the visual design of uh -huh. Demolisher, so mostly 2D painting. Uh, and Dominic did the final 3D model that uh, went straight to the game. It's easier for us as a team to check first ideas on, a, on these flat images. So, you know, in Photoshop you can uh, take elements and move them around, you can resize them, you can change colors very quickly, which is not possible on models. First, we wanted to revive the old Demolisher from the prequel. And as you may remember, he was wearing this uh, police armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we... Uh, we thought that this is not exactly uh, where we want to go with him because uh, we felt that something organic, like on, on this uh, concept, this yes, would work better. And it, it feels with this uh, whole idea with, as I said, uh, bubbles for weak points and hardened tissue for protection. So with Demolisher, he should have this these plates made of organic, uh, it's like his organic armor. tissue. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. When the final concept uh, is done, then go straight to Dominic. To Dominic. Uh, he could bring this flat image, as you can see here, into three-dimensional uh, living creature in game environment. And I remember that you like how you like this. Yes, uh, exactly. Concept. It was super cool for me to model all, all of these tiny details on a big guy like him. So, for example, on concept Bell state that is delivered to us, mm -hmm. the concept is not, let's say, always fully finalized. So small details uh -huh. like muscle separation, wrinkles, veins, and very tiny stuff, it's not fully finalized. Because as you can see on the concept of Demolisher, it just shows the like, general feeling, the idea, the silhouette and size of him. And you cannot see like the smallest of the details in him. And that's the moment when 3D artist takes a bit of his initiative and already on modeling stage tries to define like the final outcome, let's say the shapes, the uh, his final silhouette details. Shadows and, and stuff like yes, that. Yes, right? also clothing and so on. And as a 3D artist, you need to have, let's say, proper understanding of how the human anatomy works. Because then you have a guy like him, very big one, mutated, and you need to take that knowledge and translate it to a different silhouette, different proportions. Give me some examples of how you found this knowledge or what you chose. Okay, in that's, research. A, that's a good question because you also need to have some skill in finding proper references. Mm -hmm and takes the best out of from them because, as an example, I was working on him and I had a really big pack of references of bodybuilders. <laughs> and uh, I was looking through the anatomy because you can see where the muscle separation and the size and the veins and very tiny details. So like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, he was, he was there, <laughs> there too. <laughs> wow. This information that you're giving me and the citizens is very beneficial. But we need to know a lot more about the other infected. Spitter, Howler, and it was a suicider? This is the type of infected that the players should avoid at all costs. He explodes and then he deals tons of damage, especially when he gets close enough. That's why he had to be visually different from uh, other special infected. We wanted to players easily spot him and have time to run away. His main characteristics are his exponated guts mm -hmm. cover only with thin membrane and a lot of blisters. For example, we have Spitter. Mm -hmm. Maybe he doesn't look too strong, but he can be very dangerous. His skin is burned and melted, as you can see on the concept bar here. As you can imagine, looking at him, he is in constant pain because his chest, neck, and even head are split into two because of the mutation that makes him spit like the chemicals from inside of his body and then burns him towards and he spits at the players. So he can hit you with that from quite a long distance. So you better run if you find a group of many of them at once. So just run. What about her? She has a wedding ring, I think. Yeah, she has a lot of, she's a fashion victim. She's a fashion victim. <laughs> that makes total sense. I'd, I'd take her on a date if I was infected. You, you like skinny girls? No, I just, I just, her nails, her style. Oh. I just, she sounds like skinny girls. Uh, not infected ones. 
Okay, wait, there's one more that I want to talk about because if we're looking at the development, we have, what about the howler? You got to tell me about this one. So the howler looks like this, that you have his head mm -hmm. and his mouth mm -hmm. looks something like this. Nice concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're on a low budget, so we're gonna... <laughs> We don't have time. A little, a little shading quirk and we will be awesome. Yeah. But this part is the most important for, gotcha. for the holder. So you can see his mouth is split into four parts, not two like every every um, yeah, other, other infected. Other this part. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this creates this megaphone effect because as you know, howler is the yeah. one that screams very, very loudly. And there's this mutation located on his chest and it's affecting the lungs and the throat. Mm -hmm. And he feels so much pain, that's why he screams. He's screaming for help. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You need to remember that those guys are not zombies, they are infected. Infected, I totally understand. So they still live and they still feel. Of course, it's very fun to create all those concepts and models, but on the other hand, we need to think about some technical restrictions. Uh -huh. Like we have uh, here on the splitter, we need, maybe we need to add more geometry around his chest because it's splitted. So we need to follow his unique anatomy. Mm -hmm. Also, we can see the same on the howler, that his mouth is splitted, so we need to put a more dense topology around that area. Topology. What is this process? Topology? Yeah. Don't make know. <laughs> <laughs> So to better explain that, how, what is topology? When we are creating model, there are three main, main stages. So we have high poly modeling, low poly, and also texturing. We start from high poly modeling, mm -hmm. and to visualize it for you, it's like we turn into traditional sculptors. So basically, but in 3D, the yes. shape, in 3D dimension, let's say. So we take our model, we can around, make it him around, sculpt from clay, and we can sculpt from his base shapes throughout more defined details and muscles and clothing and so on. For that part, we are using software that is called ZBrush. That's the most important part, high poly modeling, because that's the stage where we define how the model will look like. The final visuals. Yes, the final visuals of the model. So we take our time with it. And if we are finally happy with the result, we can move to the low poly modeling. Okay. This is the next step. Yes, this is the next step, exactly. To put it simply, the high poly model is like, it contains millions, really a lot of millions of geometry. Uh -huh. And because of that, the game engine cannot run the smoothly the stable FPS. So to avoid doing that, we need to prepare simplified version of the model, uh -huh. but at the same time, keeping the result of our modeling on high poly. As the modelers, we must imagine how this new optimized surface will deform during animations. And uh, how certain muscles will look like if the human NPC or creature move its arm up or bend his body. To check the topology that we prepared, we are preparing the prototype mesh, mm -hmm. the prototype model of the infected that we'll model later on. So we can provide model like that to animators, riggers, and check how this geometry will move around. So that helps us a lot, and if they give a green light, then we can move with our work to the final result. And finally, from our side, uh, is to give our models uh, the final textures. So what I mean is giving them uh, colors for mm -hmm. their clothes uh, and defining uh, materials, uh, if it's uh, rough or shiny, mm -hmm. if it's going to be a soft material or more like uh, metal or, or wood, and then we export it to, to the engine and test it if it's working on our lighting conditions. But you can interact with not just the infected, like other hundreds of NPCs, right? That process looks long and complicated. Yes, it's long, maybe not so complicated for us, uh -huh. because by developing the character editor that mm -hmm. is integrated with our engine, we basically can build full character models from like library of available assets. Okay. So to support the whole idea, we took our time developing character clothing system. So for example, I can take your vest or my shirt mm -hmm. and just mix with different pants, maybe add some add-ons like belts or bags and so on, change materials, colors, and also change faces, different ones or add different haircuts. So along with that, with our scanning team, we developed a pipeline of heads creation. Led us to build 
quite big library of faces that we have available to us in the game. So thankfully to our systemic approach, we are able to basically mix every face with a different one. So this way we can create like a lot of face visuals, basically in no time and at the same time without any memory cost in the game. Uh -huh. Without like any performance issue. That saves a lot of time. Yes, exactly. And this approach always tr translates to the hairs. In Dying Light 2, haircuts are mostly built from systems, which mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> which means we don't use unique haircuts too often, only for the main NPCs. The system is built from different parts, such as fringes, bumps, ponytails, different hair sections, bases, and so on. By that, we could create a huge amount of combinations and unique haircuts without having any performance issues. When uh, we had everything established, mm -hmm. uh, we could assemble almost any new needed character um, for our game. I think this is the part that we are all very proud of. Uh, but from concept art point of view, it was a little challenging because you know you have to have a character that is uh, that fits to the brief. It's somehow unique and also is using uh, meshes that we previously designed and modeled. So it was tricky how to how to keep it uh, unique and and I think it turned out quite good. The more I learn from you guys, uh, I would like to say developers is a cool name, but artist is also like this is. This is a beautiful design. You're strange individuals, but <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, I'm not judging. I just needed to understand how to handle these monsters, but they're beautiful in a sense. Is there anything you else you wanted to say? Thank you for having us here that we were able to talk a bit about how we work and cooperate. But also I would like to thank Karina, Kasia on their work on the game. And of course, the rest of the team that is missing here today, yeah. but they are there. So thanks everyone. And they're very talented yes. uh, people and artists. And I think we had a lot of ups and downs while creating Dying Light 2 uh, as a team, but we always uh, like, we always knew how to deal with it with humor and with laughter and every problem could be just solved in five minutes because we just laugh about it and to, I don't know, just put some strange ideas on there. And I would like to thank my team for a warm welcome and that I could always count on them whenever I needed and I could learn from them and by that I grew as an artist and I think as a person as well. If you'd like to join a team, go to our website. Check out what open positions are available. I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll be one of the individuals who brings more terror to the city. Wait, maybe I should encourage that. Forget about it. Anyways, go Pilgrim. We'll see you again at the Fish Eye Canteen. And remember, stay human. <laughs>